Detective Matt Hickey and Detective Jill Leiter. They all uh, worked very diligently on this case. And uh, after I read a prepared statement, uh, they will be available for questions. Uh, the Beach Grove Police Department wanted to inform the public that a second individual has been arrested in the shooting and death of 16-year-old Xavier Ware. Ware was shot and killed in Beach Grove a little after 3 in the morning on April the 7th, 2019 in the 400 block of Grovewood Drive. German Para, age 26, who is an active duty military police sergeant, was arrested in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Beach Grove Police had presented information to the Marion County Prosecutor's Office and after an arrest warrant was issued, U.S. Marshals organized Para's apprehension. Para was arrested on April the 23rd, 2019, and he was booked into the Hardin County Detention Center. Para, who also lists an address in Indianapolis, was charged by the Marion County Prosecutor's Office with the murder of Xavier Ware and two additional counts of criminal recklessness. German Pair is contesting extradition back to Indiana and a governor's warrant will be sought in order to transport him to the Marion County Jail. Pair's next court hearing in Hardin County, Kentucky is scheduled for May the 24th, 2019. This is the second arrest connected with this homicide. Earlier, Beach Grove Police arrested 16-year-old Isaiah Funes on April the 7th, 2019. Although a juvenile, Fuez was charged as an adult in this case. The Marion County Prosecutor's Office also charged Funes with murder and two counts of criminal recklessness in this case. The Beach Grove Police have arrested both sus subjects who were involved in the shooting of Xavier Ware, and the vehicle that was involved has been recovered. However, this case is still an active and open investigation, and police request that anyone with any information to call the Beach Grove Crime Tips Line at 317-782-4950 or email information to crimetips at beachgrove.com. Any additional inquiries should be directed to the Marion County Prosecutor's Office Public Information Officer. And this statement will be available for distribution when we're done here. I just want to commend the Beach Grove Police Department. Uh, these uh, professional employees and detectives behind me for their great work in solving this crime. Uh, this crime uh, was very troubling, uh, especially to the people who live down in that area. And we've had uh, more than one contact with most of them down there, and we'll be reaching out to them again. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Officer Lee Huffman, uh, Officer Libby Clive, Clive, Cliver, and Off uh, Sergeant or Lieutenant Scott Ferrer. Uh, they initially responded to this uh, on Grovewood Drive and helped uh, pull uh, Xavier from his vehicle. So uh, with that, uh, we will open it up for questions, and I will defer to Detective Mercury. Thank you so much for coming. If I may say, uh, along with the um, um, uh, press release that we're going to hand out to you, we also have a mugshot photo for you uh, from Kentucky. Um, I wanted to thank the mayor for his kind words and thank my colleagues. Uh, for all their help, and the chief and deputy chief, uh, Mark Schwartz and Michael Maurice, for all their support. Um, uh, it, we've needed it. It's been hard work, um, um, but I uh, feel like we're on the right path, and we're uh, coming to a resolution in this matter. With that, I'll just, if I can, answer a couple questions for you, but I will refer a lot of those questions to the Marion County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, they have uh, in their possession the, the filed probable cause, and would be able to give a redacted version to you at, uh, as you guys normally go through your channels. Uh, again, 26-year-old, you said active duty military. Um, anything more on uh, 
which uh, branch of the military uh, he's, he's with, or just background on him. Um, yes, and uh, this is in the probable cause, so I will comment on this. Uh, he's a U.S. Army, uh, he's a sergeant, he's a military police officer, and he's stationed down at one of the bases in Kentucky. Can you talk a word on a motive in all this? So, um, I'm not going to comment uh, on a motive. Uh, I think when one reads a probable cause, uh, they can infer one, but uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to say mode, right? I, I just don't think this is the proper form for this. I think that that's later on down the road. Um, but I'm not going to comment on a motive at this time. How did this 26-year-old uh, Army sergeant uh, come in contact with a couple of 16-year-olds? Um, you know, uh, again, there's some of that's in the probable cause. Um, and uh, and, uh, to, and it's, it, it's a good question. It's a question that when, uh, as he became developed as a suspect, um, that we were wondering as well. Um, I, I, uh, there's a, some celebrations, wonderful uh, cultural celebrations that occur um, in, uh, in the Latin uh, Latino community, um, and uh, I, I think it's a possibility. Um, uh, I, let me say this: right. allegedly, he has been seen at those functions, and again, that's in the problem. So you've got a governor's. What's it called? Governor's. How, how often is that? Is yes, yeah, so governor's more, and, and honestly, uh, I am uh, not that knowledgeable about it. I do know it, it's, it's, it's fairly routine. Um, the Marion County Sheriff's Office uh, would be the lead on that. The U.S. Marshals arranged for the arrest. Um, uh, they work with law enforcement down there. And I, if I may say, I, I would be completely remiss. The uh, United States military, it's the U.S. Army, was absolutely uh, a, a wonderful indispensable to work with. Their CID agents did a wonderful job, helped us out. Long hours, stayed late, long hours in constant communication with us. We just couldn't have had more help from them, and they were professional and outstanding in every way. I'm sure this is something we can read on as well, but what was the evidence or the tip that led you to this man? Um, I, I think, like you said, it's in the probable cause. I think that, that we continue to hear uh, of a description of an individual. And uh, for some time, that individual's name eluded us, but we knew who we were looking for. Uh, we just didn't know the name of that person. Uh, and then, that, like all cases, you know, we were able to you know, get a break and then follow up on that break as the evidence led us down a trail. Is Mr. Parra from Indianapolis originally? Uh, well, I can't say if he's from Indianapolis. He did attend uh, high school in Indianapolis. Uh, he has residents here in Indianapolis and family here in Indianapolis, but I don't know if he was born here in Indianapolis. Was he arrested as part of this warrant for this case, or was he arrested on something else in Kentucky? Right. No, he was arrested on a warrant in this case. Yes, sir. Do military police officers, are they... What kind of police powers do they have that can even answer that? I have to be honest. I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know the answer. Actually, Vic Reithart might be able to answer that better than I, as he's a former uh, U.S. Army. Right? U.S. Army Marines. Marines. Okay, so yeah, they, they have. They're police, just like. Just like. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is it believed that he used a, a weapon issued to him um, in in this crime? Um, we are not for sure, but it is our belief that that is not the case. That the, the uh, um, I don't want to talk too much about it, so I won't. Uh, but no, I don't believe that he used a military weapon in this. No. Okay. Well, um, I'll hand out this press release so that you have all the particulars along with the mugshot. If you would rather it be digitally sent to you because it, uh, it's better uh, quality, we can do that as well. Thanks for coming. Um, uh, the, just, if I may, just be cognizant uh, of the, the help and the support also uh, from the victim's family who's here. Um, we're in constant communication with them and will continue so because this is just the first step, as you all know. Uh, we have uh, everyone's presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. So we will, uh, you know, we have a long road still ahead of us. And, and, and as we said in the final of that, it's still an active and open investigation, as all cases are, until it's finally concluded in the court of law.
could there be other arrests yet to come in this case, or do you believe you have everyone involved? I believe that we have everybody that was involved in the shooting, the actual shooting incident. As far as the rest of the case goes, I think a lot of that will determine uh, from Marion County Prosecutor's Office and things like that. So that's kind of out of my mind to, to say. But in answer to the short question, do we have the people that were on Grove with that night firing? It's our belief, yes, we have the people that were up in, in that vehicle that evening firing at Xavier Ware. And the nature of this involving an active military member, it's crossing state lines. Can you compare this to any previous case in Beach Grove, or is this the first of its kind? Well, I can't. I have been on Beach Grove 28 years, um, and I can't compare every uh, uh, case for sure. But I, I found it to be unique, uh, uh, and, and for both those facets that you said. Um, and um, uh, it, you know, I close my eyes because I'm trying to think of some other cases right off the top of my head, but I, I don't want to uh, miss something there. Uh, I know we've had fugitives that have gone out of state, uh, but were they also in the military? No. So uh, I, I think it's I think it's it's pretty unique. Yes, sir. I do. Okay. Thank you all for coming, and thanks for your patience and the, the delay of the start. Okay. So put the press release up here and photos. There's ten, so I think that's enough. Thank you.